in today's short video, we're going to be looking at the main capabilities of the Axstream software for radial inflow machines. So when we open a new project inside of Axstream, we have the opportunity to select within all of these various compressible flow um, machines or the incompressible ones over there. Looking at turbines, you can see we've got axial, radial inflow for single stage, uh, multi-stage radial inflow and outflow turbines, and a mix of the two. Right now, we're going to be looking at the radial inflow turbine single stage, and we're going to be looking at this task right here. So when you start a new project, you have, the different, you have two different tasks you can choose from. The conceptual design, from which we're going to be specifying a, a set of boundary conditions and geometric parameters in order to generate some flow path. The second one is if you want to import some existing hardware inside of the software in order to um, to look at uh, different types of analysis, optimization, reverse engineering, etc. So here we'll just go with this. When you open the software, after creating a new project, it takes you to the project database, which is this window right here. And it's going to contain absolutely all the information about your given geometry, as you'll be able to see over here. Then you can go into the preliminary design, which is going to be this icon right here. And that's where we're going to be doing the input of the boundary conditions, geometric parameters, and the constraints in order to generate a certain number of different geometries, by default 200. Um, and that's going to be done using a, uh, a mean and a max value for each of the inputs. So if I open one of my models here where I already have some data inputted, I'll go ahead and click the uh, generate button. And you can see the progress bar here at the bottom going very quickly and producing the 20,000 different designs that I had selected uh, to, uh, to, to generate. Uh, from this table here, you can see some of the values, some of the parameters for the values are the same for the mean and the max. In this case, this value is fixed, but you can see some other ones uh, are going to be set as a range. So in this case, we can see if 20,000, 60,000, or anything in between is going to provide um, the best compromise of all the different criteria that you want to evaluate so that you can select the best geometry for your particular application. So here we have a design space in which we have uh, 2,300 different geometries that were created. So here, all of these dots here corresponds to different design altogether. The one right here with the applied arrow is going to look like this geometry right here. We can look at some of the other ones over here and you can see that if I click on those, then they're going to show us a different view because that's going to correspond really to a different design altogether. Um, and then from there, we'll be able to then look at these two tables here in order to evaluate the influence of each parameter on the various characteristics of the machine. So for example, we had set the rotational speed to be one of the inputs. And we can see here that the general trend is that the efficiency can be pretty high. It's most likely going to be best around uh, 45 to 50,000 RPM over there. You can see if I go below 25,000 RPM, the efficiency here is going to be dropping. Uh, in the same way, I could look at the wheel diameter. Here we can see I have something that's going to be a little bit harder to read. But if I put the two together, you can see we're going to have a, a, a red region here where we're going to have the highest efficiency. So that's going to give us the best compromise of what is the uh, the best rotational speed for a given value of diameter or the other way around. Okay. Uh, and from there, you're also going to have the opportunity to set some filters. So as an example here, you can see I selected the, uh, the blade height at this location here, over here. And you can see um, that it ranges from around 5 millimeters over here to around 45 on the right side here. And um, anything that's going to be less than like 8 or 9 millimeters here is going to have a rather low efficiency. So I can select a value of filter here so that all the designs that do not meet this criterion are going to be automatically filtered out and I can focus on the rest of the design space. So by doing this with all the various parameters, um, setting some manufacturing constraints and so on, that helps you select the machine that's going to work best for your particular case.
based on your space, your um, go for efficiency, your power, or, uh, or any of the other criteria available. Once you, once you figure out a machine that you want to work with, you can click on the Save Data button here, and that's going to transfer this geometry to all the other parts of the software. So from there, you'll be able to do things like a 1D or a 2D streamline calculation, so P9 here and streamline over here. And that's done again within a click of a button. It takes about a second or so in order to run the calculation and get everything set and ready. You can review the convergence graph here at the top. Some of the most basic performance parameters are going to be available here. If you want to review these in a lot more detail, you have the product database, as we saw at the beginning. From there, you'll have velocity triangles and a bunch of different charts, which is which are going to show you all the information you could need in order to see how to uh, improve the performances of your machine, as well as how it's going to behave for different types uh, or different uh, values of boundary conditions. Uh, speaking of this, you have this module right here called XPlan, which is going to be used to perform some design of experimental optimization on your machine. I will not show it here, uh, but I just wanted to mention it uh, since we're doing a very quick video. This module here, XPlan, is going to be taking the solver that we just saw here, either the midline or the streamline, and run some automation on it. So from there, you can create some performance maps, you can look exactly look at some parametric studies or anything uh, anything of the sort. Here I have a file that I loaded in which I'm changing the inlet temperature of the turbine, the static outlet pressure, the rotational speed, but there's a bunch of other things as you can see that you'd be able to select from. Okay. So then we specify how many values we want for each parameter, what is going to be the minimum and the maximum value to use, and then that gives us a table that contains all the calculated data, which can be copied to an external source if you like, as well as a 2D and a 3D map over here. Uh, so in, the, in this current case, you can see we've plotted the mass flow as a function of the power over here for all the various rotational speeds and temperatures studied. We're going to have a separate tool for the profiling of actual blades versus radial blades. So the radial blade profiler is going to be this one. The extra one is going to be this button here. In either of these tools, we are going to be designing the each, each blade individually. Uh, and that's going to typically be done for each section. Unless you have a prismatic blade, like it's the case over here. Um, and if that's the situation, then you only have to change one section and it's going to extrapolate or copy the profile to all the other sections uh, in this blade. If I go to my rotor here, you can see this is the geometry that was created by our preliminary design. So it is definitely something quite reasonable. And we can vary here the shape of the beta curves in red for each of the sections, as well as the theta curve here in blue. By default, we have three sections available. Section one is going to be the hub, section two is the mean, and section three is going to be the tip. But we can increase this number uh, as desired. So from there, you'll be able, for example, to change the trailing gauge angular offset, as you can see over here. Uh, you'll be able to um, edit the shape of some of the various curves that are going to be in, on here. So I'm just doing something extreme here to show you the uh, what's going to happen. So here we can see we have a lot of wrapping happening to the blade uh, and a bunch of other things you can do in here, including some 2D CFDs. Uh, we don't have any volute in this design, but we have a very capable module uh, specifically for volute design. In this uh, software, we can also run stress and CFD calculations, which are going to be 3D analysis. For the stress calculation, we're going to be looking at act stress. We'll select the component we want to work with. It automatically loads it. It knows automatically a lot of information about the pre-processing information, so things like the number of blades, the actual blade geometry, the boundary conditions for the blade, the rotational speed, etc. From there, we can perform the, de the mechanical design of the wheel, of the shroud if we have one, uh, change the, uh, the mesh parameter settings. I'll just increase this slightly for now, and then go to the solver to select what kind of um, task you want to run. 
so static stresses, model calculation, harmonic calculation, Campbell interference, interference or safe diagram. Uh, based on this, uh, based on whatever task you want to run, you can include, if you like, the aerodynamic loads, uh, as well as centrifugal loads, pressure loads, and thermal loads. Once you're ready to go, just click the Start button. That's going to mesh your geometry and then um, run the actual analysis. So here we can see the analysis was done very fast. It is a rather coarse mesh, uh, but for this demonstration purpose, it's going to be enough. And from there, on the right side, you can select all the various parameters you want to review once the calculation is performed. Okay. So here I've selected the volumes of stresses. I've got the normal stresses, stresses in different directions, so displacements, etc. Okay. In the same way, we can run some 3D CFD. Here you can select as many as many components as you want. So here I'll just grab the entire uh, stage. You can see again we have our stator, we have our rotor. Uh, we're going to have all the information about the stator clearances, so number of blades, the rotational speed for the rotor, etc. And for each parameter, we can specify exactly how we want the mesh to be uh, created for uh, for each various parameter. Uh, boundary conditions are automatically inherited from the project, but we can change them if we'd like. This is useful if we want to look at our design conditions, for example. And then over here, we're going to have all of the solver settings. So here, I'm, I did not change the mesh. So it's going to be very, very coarse. But I just want to show you the process. And I'm only running 10,000 iteration. I'll probably stop it before anyway. Uh, but here, I want to show you that we have the opportunity to resume an existing calculation, include viscosity and turbulence for some of the, the various popular models. And we can also run the geometry for the entire 3D blade channel, which is what I'm doing here or for um, some of the various slices, uh, spanway section of the blade. Okay, I'm going to stop this calculation here. It's not finished uh, converging, but I just want to show you very briefly the post-processing capabilities. So here you can see how many iterations we performed. That was all done pretty fast. You'll be able to review the um, conservation of mass, which again, the calculation was stopped here at time, but things like the power, uh, the kinematics parameter, thermodynamics parameter, and uh, the efficiency as well is going to be in here if the calculation converges. Okay, so that was done as I mentioned on very very coarse mesh. We can see it here, and then you'll have on the right side again all the various parameters you want to review once the calculation is going to be done. Okay. Additionally, if you've run the calculation on the full three section. You can add different types of slices to the uh, to the model in order to see um, what's happening inside of the actual channel. So here, for example, we can see one of one of the sections being here and another section here being over there. I hope you found this video interesting. If you like more information, feel free to contact us.